Good evening, Fernwood. It's your TV pal, Neil, and it's time for some more Late Night Variety Madness with another episode of Fernwood Tonight. If you are just seeing my face for the first time, this is a reaction show where we watch this wild and woolly show together, and then we talk about it because we are also wild and woolly. And if that sounds like it's your bag, then please stick around. Also, if you are a viewer who feels like you have the means to help support the challenge, or maybe you're just curious, then please check out our Patreon, where you get early access to episodes, monthly updates, and other stuff when I say so. We are watching episode 44 from September 1st, 1977. Yesterday was charming, in a way, so let's take a look back. Barth Gimbel felt that the home audience was curious about how things were backstage at Fernwood tonight, and that's when he announced that there is a new at-home version of Fernwood tonight. With questions for the host to ask and answers for the guests to give, and also a bandstand for the Mirth Makers at Home with many kazoos that you can play the theme song on. Of course, that's only a prototype that was shown, so you'll have to order your set as soon as possible. Then we brought on young Sherry McCormick who sang for her hen Ferky. She choked the chicken a bit and then it played dead. And then Connie Bushman came out to pay Barth the 10 bucks that she lost, betting him that he wouldn't let Sherry on as a guest. Connie also has a new program helping pets find owners and that is a video dating style service to allow the animals to see how they feel about their potential new owners. She also tells Barth that she brought home video footage of him from the show and one of the pets from the center felt entranced with him. Then she brought out a basket and introduced Barth to Theta Boa and Barth jumped over the chair and ran backstage as soon as he could. Jerry takes the host seat for a moment, but Barth comes out on guard, making sure that the snake was put away. And then we bring out our next guest, Herbert H. Jansen, who is a former mayor who had recently gotten out of jail. However, Happy Kind interrupts the interview because the snake got out and that causes pandemonium in the studio and Barth is nowhere to be seen for the sign-off to the show. As I said, yesterday was quite chaotic. Who can say what we will see today? Tonight, from Fernwood, Fernwood Tonight, 30 minutes of very remarkable entertainment, coming to you almost live with your host for tonight, Mr. Barth Gimble. Tonight, Barth's guest will be a lady from down south who has a surprise for Bart, Sergei Nabokov, the dancing communist, and Happy Kine and the Mirth Makers. And me, I'm Jerry Hubbard, and now here's your host and mine, Mr. Bart Gimbal. Thank you very much. That, I think that's a new record. Thank you. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Firmwood tonight. I am Barth Kimball. <laughs> I'm really not this happy. Actually, if it weren't for the, the old show business tradition that the show must go on and the fact that uh, I am paid on a per show basis, uh, I wouldn't even be here tonight. I'd be at home mourning for a great love affair that never was and a great lady who was, but now is only partly. Um, I, have, I have the sad, sad duty of explaining why Jane Tiffany, the beautiful and talented sportscaster on the Channel 6 news team, will, this is rough, will no longer be visiting this program or, or any other, at least for a while, because the sands have run out of Jane's hourglass figure. And it happened... <clears throat> It happened as it should have on the field of sports. Jane was doing a feature on the Fernwood Mules here in town, our local <laughs> local Class D baseball team. Anyway, Jane was Jane was standing near the batting cage when when someone turned on that automatic pitching machine they had there, that iron, that iron mic, they call it. Turned that on for batting practice, and Jane was beamed by by an automated fastball and. <laughs> 
terrible broken nose, very bad bloody nose, in fact. I hate to say that, but it's the case. Um, by the time the Furman Emergency Hospital could be reopened past its normal 5 o'clock closing time, it was just about too late. So uh, Jane had run out of innings, and uh, I had lost a lifetime of, well, possible outings. No, no, no. I know what you're thinking. She's not dead. She's, um, at this point, she's, how to put it nicely, she's uh, a vegetable. <laughs> and uh, a beautiful, ripe vegetable, though. Very, very lovely. Yeah. And we're not going to let her just sit there and, right. well, as vegetables say, rot. Someone says in the audience. I wouldn't say that about her. In fact, the girls in the office are attempting to find out Jane's real last name so that her uh, family can be notified, and we're doing everything we can. Meantime, although we had really no time to prepare anything special, we did want to, in our small way, pay some kind of tribute to this very special woman. I hope you enjoy this. They took her out of the ball game. They carried her out of the park. I tossed up my peanuts and Cracker Jack when I heard the news that she might not come back. But it's root, root, root for the home team. And if she should go, it's a shame. But it's one, two, three strikes, you're out. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jerry, that was kind of touching. Oh, you know, that was, I hate to say it, it was kind of fun. It's a shame these, uh, these eulogies have to be for people when they're hurt or uh, injured, but otherwise they're really a, a lot of fun. And I think we have a good idea here. We're going to autograph this ball and send it over to Jane. So oh, that's quickly a great she recovers, idea. She's going to have a little souvenir. Here, let me Inci just uh, get my hand back on there. Yeah, incidentally, this is uh, it's the same ball that struck her, so it should have some... <laughs> Uh, and some of the other... I think I'll just add mine here. Well, maybe it'll help her bounce through, Jerry. Well, I Actually, hope so. <laughs> we're hoping, we, uh, as I said before, I told you people, it's not it's serious, but it's not as bad as it could be. She did break her nose very badly, and... Uh, How badly is it going to be? I mean, will she recover completely? Well, it's a lot of shock to the head area, and she has amnesia at this point, and... Uh, amnesia? Yeah. Maybe then I shouldn't have written forget-me-not here. Jerry, <laughs> Oh, you print your name. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. That's good. Just in case people say, who's that? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, the thing is about her, though, she has this terrible nosebleed, I guess, as you know, from the broken... She's also, and never knew this ahead of time, the doctors found out she is a hemophiliac, and, of course, there's no way to stop her. <laughs> Fortunately, we have a blood bank here in Fernwood, which is doing marvelous things to keep her going, and best news of all, of course, that's going to run out sooner or later, um, Cletus Emmett Wheelwelker. Bud Price's friend, the inventor, yes. has yes. invented a device whereby you can actually recycle your own blood rather than have transfer. Oh, yeah. So it's have more her nosebleeds right back in the arm, and she is basically keeping herself alive. And I think that's that's the kind of girl she always was, and we hope she pulls through. He uses a, a very simple enema tube, uh, just a kind of a makeshift thing, was... and it's in keeping with this whole uh, modern day thing of energy recycling. You know. Yeah, I was trying to avoid the actual name of the trappings, but uh, well, you said it. Okay, uh, we'll be right back after these words. Stay with us. <laughs> Thanks, Happy. Happy kind of the mirth makers. Let's hear it for them. Aren't they wonderful? Yeah, we're pretty proud of him. Yeah, you know, Jerry, this is a heck of a nice idea. I think to do this for her really. Well, sh I think this really shows the size of your heart. Well, really, it was not. <laughs> really, it's, it's, it's nothing. At any rate, our next guest. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Not so fast. Pull on the reins. We have a surprise for you, and I can't wait to see the expression on your face when you see who our next guest is. Uh, it's someone who you haven't seen in about eight months, and I know you're going to be tickled pink when this next guest comes out here. Any uh, guesses on uh, what? It is, uh, Jerry. Oh. I hate this. Okay, all right. You know that I really do. Please, please, don't play games with me on, on my show over the airways. Better than getting hit in the head with a hardball, though, is. <laughs> Jane, no offense if you're listening, but then of course she doesn't. Um, this is 
Listen, I'm not going to hold you in suspense any longer. Ladies and gentlemen, let's have a nice Fernwood welcome and a big warm hello uh, for someone who's come a long way for a joyful reunion with her own Barth Gimble, your own Aunt Edith, Edith Irma Simpkins. <laughs> isn't this wonderful? Isn't this something? You know, Barth, we didn't even know you had an Aunt Edith until she called from Miami trying to track you down. And then we said, would it be a, a, just an emotional moment to reunite the both of you? Here? Actually, Jerry, this is not my aunt. Okay? <laughs> She's just a friend. Come it's back. It's real to nice to see you. Back. I'm not coming back. Uh, <laughs> Uh, she's just a friend, and we got a big show tonight, so we're going to get on with the rest of the Barth, show. Wait a minute. You surprised me. This, your aunt has come hundreds of miles at her own expense. We want you to Too sit bad. down here and talk over old times and get reacquainted. Come on. Spend Jerry, a few that's minutes. ridiculous. And as I said before, she is not my aunt. <laughs> or aunt. Come back to me, boss. Yeah, I heard Come that. Back. Okay. Our next guest is a gentleman who is... Oh, that's <laughs> This is just some... An aunt and her nephew, like two peas in a pod, huh? Well, cool it, will you, Jerry? Yeah, okay. Cool the condominium has been completely redecorated. Woo! I even put vinyl on the roof of the Bentley. <laughs> oh, please, hold up your end of the bargain, Barth. Oh, I'd hold up my end if I were you, Barth. <laughs> Uh, Bentley, what a, a great aunt. You know, I, I had a, an aunt when I was a kid. She's still living. Uh, aunt Mary Louise, I thought she was a wonderful lady, but the only thing she ever gave me and my brother Conrad were a couple of tickets to a circus. You must be her favorite nephew. He's the greatest, Jerry. Oh, uh -huh, you're <laughs> right. Okay, Auntie. <laughs> Listen. Uh, uh, boss, please, please come back. Come to Palm Beach with me, please. We can take that cruise to Acapulco just as we planned. I put a radar range in the bedroom so that you don't have to get up at midnight for your melted cheese sandwich. Wow, what an ass! <laughs> Shut up. Listen, Aunt Edith, uh, it's very nice to see you again. Have a great trip back to Miami, really, and take good care, okay? Bye. Take Route 1 all the way back. Bye. <laughs> You've pushed me too far now. You think mirrors grow on trees? <laughs> I put mirrors on every ceiling in that condominium. <laughs> there were to be services rendered, Barth, remember? Things like taking you to the sea aquarium on Sunday afternoon and getting your medical prescriptions filled, things like that. is binding one way or another. You're playing with fire, Barth. Okay, okay, let's just get this thing out in the open right here once and for all. This woman came to me in Miami and said she wanted to be my patron, and I was grateful. Everyone needs a patron. Michelangelo had his uh, Medici. I had a Feinberg, okay? Big sin. <laughs> uh, goodness knows an artist needs freedom from financial worry to flourish, but I live in Fernwood now. You understand, Edith? Yeah. Burn wood, okay? And I have just a little too much dedication to these great people to chuck it all for a couple of bucks and a couple mirrored ceilings and the good life. You understand? Not only that, but I cannot cross state lines. You know, I can't even cross the Florida line until my lawyers get other lies ironed out, okay? What happened in Florida, as far as I'm concerned, is over, kaput, and finished, and that includes you, and that's it. Amen, and that's all, and that's it. If you need an extra nephew, I'm available. Oh, Jerry, only one nephew per customer here. Okay. We'll be right back after these important words. Our next guest is, uh, well, there's not much to say about him. It speaks for itself. He's the dancing communist. Stay with us. Okay. Now that you're a member of the Channel 6 family, you might want to just sign. It's Jane Tiffany. Right. No, you would write your own name, not hers. <laughs> right, while you're doing that, my next guest has a very special story. He has defected from his native Russia, where he claims he was a famous dancer, but was harassed for political reasons. You hear about that all the time, mm -hmm. these defectors, for mm -hmm. various reasons. Not all of them dancers. Um, that's why he decided to come to America, where an artist is free to express himself. Here he is for the first time on an American stage, kind of a coup here for our show, the very comparable Sergei Nabokov. <laughs> Hey. 
Thank you. And now, in dreadful appreciation, I wish now to perform my dance, which is in spirit of friendships between Soviet peoples and American peoples. <laughs> Breaking free from chains that bind me to Mother Russia. Ah. Hey. Hey. So sad to leave my homeland. Hey. Leave my mother behind. Hey. Speak to freedom. Speak to freedom. Over the ocean. Over the border. Everywhere I turn, I see smiling faces of American people. Hello, nice to have you. Glad to see you. It's Sergey, right? Yes, that is not, right. It's Sergei. not Serge. Sergey. Okay, this yes. is Serge. <laughs> okay. Yes. I'm here with Sergey uh, Navikov. Oh, incidentally, baseball, an American uh, pastime. Uh, you might want to sign yes, this. Uh, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sergey, I, I really don't know what to say about his performance. It's uh, kind of... Well, a... I do. I'd say you're a very good entertainer, which is unusual because I don't usually care for communists who pretend they're defectors but are actually spies who've come over here to get information from us, Jerry. <laughs> I don't understand that exactly. Jerry, <laughs> Mr. Nabokov, uh, welcome to America, and especially you. welcome to Fernwood. Thank you very much. Uh, you know, it's a pleasure to be in a country where, where an artist, despite his uh, political beliefs, can, how you say, uh, do his own thing. Yeah. Yes? That is how you say it. Yes, yes. And we're very glad to have you on the show, yes, because this means, of course, that we won't have to pay to go see you do whatever you do uh, anywhere else. Isn't that right, <laughs> Jerry? Jerry Hubbard, co-host, driver's license, S550631. <laughs> Sergey, would you mind uh, telling us the story of how and why you came to leave Mother Russia? Well, it is my belief, now I cannot prove nothing, but it is my belief that the government thinks I'm a dangerous radical. Mm -hmm. So they resort to ruthless methods to prevent me from performing the dance like you see me do here tonight. Yeah, I can imagine that. Uh, what exactly did they do to you? Well, oh, 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 they do nothing to me directly, you understand. Mm -hmm. They cannot do that. Uh, I am a star. <laughs> but, but they do things uh, indirectly to sabotage my performance. I remember one night I am performing at Vladivostok Civic Auditorium. And I'm fine, going along very well. Then, just eight bars into my opening number, some people in the audience, they stand up and they start throwing things at me and yelling <laughs> terrible things at me. I don't understand. Why would they do that? Yeah. Well, I have the answer. It is secret police. Uh -huh. <laughs> secret police, they come in and they scare them so much that the entire audience gets up and walks out. <laughs> Well, you sure had guts then. Yeah, well, uh, then you have gall now. <laughs> <laughs> then uh, the, uh, the owner of theater, he come out and, uh, oh boy, I don't know what they did to him, but I don't, uh, it must have been terrible because he was shaking all over. His face was red and he said to me, Sergei, I have to ask you to go. I say, but why, Boris? Why? Why? <laughs> We've been friends for 20 years. Uh, I saved your life during war. Why? And he said to me, because you stink. <laughs> So you decided to come here after all that harassment, huh? Well, uh, no, I make my decision after they uh, threaten my family. <laughs> my beloved mother, she came to me one day and she said, Sergei, why don't you go to America and stop embarrassing me in front of neighbors? I say, and she said to me, Nepopraskovskia. Well, what's that mean? It means, you stink. Oh, that's <laughs> so that's when I decided to contact Vladimir. 
and he make all the arrangements for me to get out of the country. Okay, is Vladimir uh, with the CIA or something like no, that? No, he's a travel agent. Uh, <laughs> make or uh, buy my tickets and here I am. Mm -hmm. Did the uh, government, the Russian government, try at all in any way to stop you from defecting, from leaving the country? Well, they only pay half my fare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, uh, but, uh, what, do you want me to do another number now? No, no, I don't think so. Uh, but I do want to thank you very much for taking the time out here to tell your story to us and I'm sure uh, the networks will be after a man with your talent. Uh, just like you, like that, you know? Oh, we'll be you. maybe with your own TV series, just fall opposite us. <laughs> we'll be right back after these words. Don't go away. We're back, just chatting here with Sergey, and uh, I'd like to thank all my guests invited who are on. Um, something interesting happened. I, I think everyone knows that when this show first went on the air, it was common knowledge that a star was born. <laughs> but uh, a lot of you don't know who that star is. Actually, uh, someone wrote in, said that they had a, a baby born on the very night that we first debuted here in Fernwood tonight. They're here tonight. They're in the front row. Jerry, would you be so kind as to sure? Why don't we see if uh, bring them up? Ah. The real little star. Hi, are you the family with the baby? Oh, uh, yes, we are. Why don't you come on up to the couch? I think Barth would like to talk to you, if uh, the little one uh, agrees. Oh, I hope she does. <laughs> <laughs> At what age do they start agreeing? Well, I think they, they, they don't uh, disagree. I think that's all we oh, can hope for. All right. Can we can we okay, we'll have the baby next Oh. oh, what's the name? Is it Barth? It's Barth, yes. It She's a girl. Barth. We named him. You Barth. named him Barth. That's yeah. great. <laughs> Yeah, she's looking at you. Yeah. I think she recognizes you. Does she watch the show? Always. Sure. No kidding. She, it's feeding time. Uh, she has your hair. Great. <laughs> oh, oh, blue eyes. Yeah. My goodness. How do you go about having one of these? <laughs> The baby was born on the night, the, the first show of... First the, show. It, yeah. it, it was planned. Really? <laughs> yeah. The baby. Yeah. I mean, we didn't know. But, you know it wasn't thing. like hit and miss like the show was. No. <laughs> How'd you like the show? Oh, well, you know, we... Did you get a chance to watch the really show that a, night? We really had a hard time watching it that night. We had been waiting for it, you know, knowing that it was coming to mm -hmm. Fernwood. And then, um... She's she certainly came along. is cute. Oh my God. Now she's going to grow up big, right? <laughs> I'm asking your question for you. Okay. Very nice having her up here. She's really darling. She's looking at you. She really I'd like to have her back here every night and we can watch her grow right through... <laughs> Through Cub Scouting, Brownies, Girl Scouts, the Ladies' Army, everything, all the way through. I just want to thank my guests tonight, uh, Sergei Nabokov, uh, thank you for not dancing any longer, and Edith, thanks for, you know what. Um, wait, 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 not so fast, sorry. I was just wondering if Mr. Uh, Nabokov would like a condominium. Yeah. We could, we could talk. Edith, Edith, I don't even think he's your type, okay? <laughs> Sit on it, Bar. <laughs> when you're called, Mr. Nabokov. Uh, why don't you call me, uh, Sergei? <laughs> okay, well, you can call each other whatever you want. You can call me a cab. You can call... <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow night. And she'll be back, and she'll be even older. That'll be wonderful. <laughs> See you then. Well, the intrigue continues, and we start with finding out why we haven't seen Miss Jane Tiffany for a little while, and she's been beaned on the bean. She got a little bonked, and now she is no longer quite functional, which is sad. At first, I thought maybe she had died, but I'm glad that she's still alive. Maybe she'll be back. Of course, it's much like characters who get written off of Mary Hartman, Mary Hartman, where something ridiculous happens and then they're not back anymore. But in this case, there's the chance that she will come back, but it maybe keeps her from, you know, having to be in every single episode. And then Barth is introduced to his aunt, Edith. In the credits, it was a lady from down south, so that was left pretty vague for us. But 
it, it seems pretty clear that Barth is getting into or has gotten into some romantic entanglements, maybe for some kind of contract. And uh, I mean, it, in this case, it seems more like he's been a kept boy of some kind uh, rather than having gotten involved in a romantic scam as often exists. Edith really wants Barth to come back to Florida and Barth has to say, well, no, I'm not allowed to cross state lines. So we can see a little bit more clarity on all of the stuff that Barth came to Fernwood for. And then we bring on a dancer, Sergei Nabokov, uh, who Jerry takes an immediate dislike to. Of course, I only became familiar with Mikhail Baryshnikov in the 80s, but he had defected in the 1970s. I was a little bit too young to have known that. Baryshnikov was one of the finest dancers of a generation. That can easily be said. And in the case of Sergei, he's definitely not the finest dancer of his generation or anything. The country practically wanted him to leave, and now he's in America. At least if things go well with Edith, he could be set. We have a young baby who has been named after Barth, born on the day of the first episode of Fernwood Tonight. I believe that was July 5th, 1977. I can't quite remember and I'm not going to look it up. It leads to a little bit of silliness, which, you know, this is a lighter kind of silliness than the chaos of yesterday. But that's pretty much all I've got to say about the episode. So let's go on to our topic of the week. We have been talking about modern day politically incorrect shows. And one, this time I'm going to share something that not only was a cartoon, but also was a comic book. And before either of those was a live action feature film. And that is Black Dynamite. Black Dynamite is a modern take on the black exploitation heroes like Shaft and Dolomite. He definitely doesn't take nothing from nobody, and he has a line of bitches waiting to get with him. As I mentioned, this was a live action feature film first and then became a comic book. I actually watched the movie, and then the comic book was something I had to have. And then the animated series, which I didn't find until later, I didn't actually get to see it while it was on the air, but I did find it. There is definitely a lot to play with in this whole world. There's a lot of different ways to enjoy Black Dynamite. So that's what I would suggest you should do. And that's all I've got to say about the topic of the week this week. This episode today was nice, light, fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching with me. Thank you so much for leaving your thoughts, feelings, and impressions down in the comments. Thank you to my top tier Patreon supporters because much like Edith, well, I need you. We will see you tomorrow night in Fernwood. <laughs>